Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Yeah, welcome to Wednesday, April 24th, 2019. And uh, today's devotional text is taken from Colossians chapter 2, from verse 11 to 17. And now we're taking my reading from the New King James Version. And the word of God says, In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So, let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come. But the substance is of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Beloved listener this morning, the topic given to the devotion is once dead but now alive. Once dead but now alive. And the devotional says one of the wonders of the Christian faith is that it consists of men and women who were once dead but are now alive. This is a very clearly this is very clearly stated in verse 13 of our reading today. And for emphasis, I want to read verse 13 again. It says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the circumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. The word of the Lord. The death spoken about here is not physical, but spiritual. The beauty of the Christian faith is that we are all a congregation of forgiven sinners. God's gracious ability to forgive does not have limits. As scripture says in that verse 13, having forgiven us all our trespasses. And the emphasis is on the fact that our forgiveness covers all our sins, all our shortcomings, all our trespasses. In verse 13. Maybe you are struggling under the weight of flows of sin and the feeling of condemnation without hope. The word of hope for us today is that God is willing and able to forgive us all our trespasses. If we come to him and ask for it in total humility. You need to realize today that you have no business groaning under the weight of sin and satanic influences. Because Jesus has already gained the victory for you. Praise the Lord. And that is what verse 14 and 15 of our text will remind us saying, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, 
triumphing over them in it. So you can see the fact that Christ came and paid the price for all of our sins. There are no sin that is excluded in this passage that the shed blood of Jesus has not covered. So when we are in Christ and put our faith totally in him, we triumph over sin and Satan. Unfortunately, not all of us realize this. That is why, even with our confession of Christ as Lord and Savior, many of us still continue to live as slaves to sin and Satan. This ought not to be. This is what the devotional is telling us about. That we human beings were all once dead before God. Because the Bible says all of us are like lost sheep. We have all gone astray. We have all gone our own ways. And the Bible reminds us that there is a way that seemeth right for every man. And the end thereof, the Bible says, is destruction, total destruction. It is not a destruction of only life taken here or not, but even in eternity, we are told that we will not enjoy eternity. But thank God, because the joy of being a child of God in Christ Jesus is the fact that yes, though in the past we have all gone our own ways, we have all gone our own paths, we have done things which uh, is not pleasing to God, but we thank God because God came in the person of his son Jesus Christ, which we celebrated just some few days ago. He came, he died, he shed his blood, and by that shed blood, the price for our sins were totally paid by the blood of Jesus. And so therefore, what here is telling us and is reminding us is that even though before we are there before God, because Jesus has shed his blood for us, he has brought us back to God. He has restored us back to a friendship with God. Before, before God, we were dead. But now, because Jesus came and shed his blood, because Jesus came and paid the price, we are no longer seen as dead people in the sight of God. We are seen as people who are now alive. Alive, even physically here or not, you will do that thing that God wants you to do. Alive, even in heaven, because having done the perfect will of God, you will make it to be with God. And there is nothing that we are aiming at in this world that is not that we are aiming at trying to be with God in the end time. Our desire is that no matter how we live long here or not, a day will come, we are going to leave this world. But after leaving this world, where are we going to spend our eternity? And that is why this topic is very important, to know that in Christ Jesus, before him, before you accepted him, you were once dead before God. But now, having accepted him, you are now alive before God. God sees you as, his, as a son of his. He sees you as a daughter of his. He sees us as his sons and as his children. So therefore, that is the beauty of accepting Christianity in Christ Jesus. Once we do that, it doesn't matter what the sins that we have been committing in the past may look like. It doesn't matter what those sins may be. You know, for so many of us, like the, 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 the devotional we say, they are still struggling with those habits that, you know, that does not please God. You find it difficult to live lying. You find it difficult to live sexual immorality. You find it difficult to live those sins. In fact, there are so many of those deadly sins today. There are people who have given their life to kidnapping. There are people who have given their lives to, to, to killing. Anyhow, God is speaking to us today that if we should accept the shed blood of Jesus on the cross, he says, one, we will have forgiveness of 
all our trespasses, as stated in verse 13. All our trespasses. So it doesn't matter what sin you may be going through, what you may be, you may be, you may be, you may be entangled with now. If you come to Jesus, Jesus will liberate you. Jesus will make you his son. He will make you his daughter. It doesn't matter whether you have lived all your life, you know, serving Satan. I want to tell you and I want to reassure you, my dear listener this morning, that the scripture says God is able to forgive and is able to forgive all our trespasses. We need not to struggle any longer. All we need to do is to go back to God. All we need to do is to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And once we do that, your sins are forgiven. There is no more condemnation. There is no more condemnation. You just need to go back to him so that you can be found worthy in the sight of God. But one thing is that we must go to him and ask for forgiveness in humility and with the fact that we are ready to turn back from that evil way that makes God see us as dead children of his in the past. We must go to God in humility and accept him. And then when we do that, we will have forgiveness of that sin. Then, it is only then that Jesus will give you victory over those sins, whatever those sins may be, like I've earlier mentioned. It could be that you are finding it difficult, you know, to, 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 to you find it difficult not uh, to, to, to tell the truth at every time. Jesus will give you the wherewithal to stand and speak the truth at all times. It may be that you find it difficult to live that sinful life of, you know, sexual immorality. Once we go to him in total humility, Jesus will give us the victory, the strength, the grace to be able to walk with him all the days of our lives. I tell you, if we all accept him, if we all become alive in him, our society will be better for it. Our families will be better for it. Our economic environment will be better for it. I tell you, even our political environment will be better for it because we live according to the perfect will of God. We will live according to what God expects us to live. And once we live according to the will of God, the will of God is for good and not for evil. I have to remind us again this morning that the perfect will of God is that he wants us to enjoy life. But today we are not enjoying life because many of us, even up to now, we are still living as if we are dead in the sight of God and sometimes even in the sight of men because our activities are contrary to what society desires of us. So beloved, I want us to call upon Jesus today. I want us to forsake all our sin. I want us to turn our back against the activities of Satan that is taking hold of both our lives, both our family lives, both our, the, the church life and the societal life. Let us turn our back to Satan. And when we do that, we will receive joy. We will receive peace. We will receive victory. Victory in this world, victory in the hereafter. Because the Bible will remind us, what shall it profit a man? If you have done all these cheatings, if you have done all this corrupt, if you have lived this corrupt life, if you have been, you, you have been wicked and, and have been terrible, you know, and have been a terror to the society, what will it profit you after this life? You gain the whole world. The Bible says, in the hereafter, you will forfeit your soul. It is my prayer that you will not forsake your soul for eternity. Because no matter how long we live here or not, it's just for a brief moment, a brief moment. The Bible will tell us that a, the man's life may be a three score and ten, and if thereafter, the remaining ones are full of pain, are full of misery. So, but there is a place that we are going to be in the presence of God, in the presence of God, where we will live forever and ever and ever. The Bible calls it eternity. Where and when we are in the presence of God, there will be no more sorrow, there will be no more pains, there will be no more, there will be no more lack. We will be in the presence of God all the days of our lives. So, beloved, as you listen to my voice and the word of God this morning or this day, I pray that your heart will be spoken unto by the word of God. God will prick your heart with his word so that your conscience, that conscience that has been dead in the past, God will quicken it and make it alive today so that you will be a source of blessing, not only to yourself, 
but to your family, to the environment you live, to the, to, to, to the nation in general, and to the world at large. And when you do that, I tell you, a day will come when God himself will welcome you home and say, well done, my faithful servant. I pray this will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Please bow and let us pray. Lord Jesus, we ask that you grant us to live above sinful habits that threatens to derail your grace in our lives. Those who are listening to me this morning, Lord, free them from every bondage to sin, to Satan, and to every wicked activity. Lord, give them that grace to be able to become your sons and daughters. So that, Lord, when we shall have run all our race here on earth, Lord, you will welcome us home to be with you in eternity, where there will be no more pains, where there will be no more lack, where we will do no evil, but we will be with you and enjoy life with you even unto eternity. This is my prayers for the people who are listening. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.